Hey everybody, Dan with Pain For You. Happy Saturday, welcome to the weekend. Today's video is gonna be titled, Pain is a decision made by the brain. I'll explain that in a minute. Let's take a couple of breaths first. Breathe in the peace, exhale the noise. Breathe in the calmness. Exhale the internal chatter. Breathe in the bravery. Exhale the fear. Breathe in the knowledge that you're actually okay. Exhale the doubt. So, Pain is a decision made by the brain. What the heck do I mean by that? You know, there's a lot of people that say pain is a distraction. That was Sarno's theory. There's a lot of people that say pain is a message from your body. I'm learning from Dr. Schubner. He's a wonderful teacher. I'm actually participating in a class that he's running today and tomorrow about... Uh, What's he, what he's now calling neural circuit pain. And it's very compelling the way he describes it, right? We can get lost in these theories of distractions and messages and neural circuit pain. He's basically explaining as a decision made by the brain. So if we encounter something like a hot stove, we touch it with our finger, the finger doesn't create the pain. The finger just simply sends a signal to the brain that says I'm touching something and it, you know, senses heat. It's the brain that has to interpret that message and make a decision as to what to do with that. So for example, I'm touching my face. That's not painful to my face or my finger because my brain is making a decision that that's normal it's it's benign it's there's nothing dangerous there but if you touch a hot stove the signal from the from the finger to the brain is interpreted as dangerous right heat you're touching something you're in front of the stove and your brain goes holy crap makes a decision here's some pain ah and what happens ouch and then the minute you realize I'm not burnt, the brain makes another decision. And it says, oh good, you're okay. Turns the pain off. So pain is nothing more than a decision to fire certain neural circuits called pain. So what the hell does this mean for people with chronic pain? It means that the brain has been perce perceiving that there's something wrong with your body and that certain things are dangerous. So for example, if you always hurt when you stand, the brain has learned that those things are dangerous. So every time you stand, the brain makes a decision to go, hey, stop it, that's dangerous. You're standing, here's some pain. Right, and that's a, a very simple explanation of a process that's going on in our nervous system. But in my opinion, it's dead on accurate. You know, absolutely accurate. You break a bone, you know, you're going to feel that sensation of something snapping, cracking. You may even hear the crack. And you realize, I just rolled my ankle, so... I just broke something, your brain senses the rolling of the ankle and perhaps the of the of the bone. But as the brain interprets those signals from the body, which don't create the pain, they just send a message to the brain that goes, hey, something just rolled over on the ankle. There was a snap in there. Your brain has to interpret that as either dangerous or no big deal. Right? If I crack my knuckles, 
the brain interprets that as safe, not a big deal. You do that when you roll your ankle and you hear a similar pop or crack, uh, the brain's interpretation is going to be a lot different. So one of the stories that uh, Dr. Schubner spoke about in his training this morning or this afternoon was if you are chasing your dog or chasing, you know, just running through a field and you twist your ankle and you hear a crack and you break it, the brain's going to create pain to make you stop, to go, hey, 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 your ankle's more important than just playing and having fun chasing the dog or something like that. Now you're running through a field and you're being chased by a lion and you roll your ankle and you hear snap. Your brain's going to say, you're being chased by a lion. That's more important. We're not going to give you the pain. You need to keep running. And so the brain has the opportunity to either deliver pain or not deliver pain based on a decision that the brain makes. Now, as it comes to chronic pain, the decision is oftentimes based on this belief system that your body is broken, which is why I spend and Dr. Schubner spends and so many people spend so much time sharing and teaching that the body's not this frail, weak, easily broken thing. That most things that are seen on MRIs are normal abnormalities, as Dr. Sarno talked about decades ago. You know, it's amazing how many abnormalities show up and what percentage of people have them. Like so recently, um, I was talking to somebody about a facet joint problem that this person was told they have and therefore created all sorts of pain. And we pulled up some stati statistics and like 50% of people had facet joint diagnoses with no pain. And so inevitably structure doesn't really cause pain. But if you have pain that starts up because of this neural circuit pain, this TMS stuff, and then you go get imaging studies you can then become very well convinced, oh no, I'm broken, I've got a bulging disc, herniated disc, torn meniscus, rotator cuff tear, I've got a disc with some degeneration and I have hip pain, so therefore my hip is shot, I might need a new hip replacement. And we can very quickly become completely sold on the belief that my body's broken, it's a problem. So what do you think the brain's going to do when it feels a sensation of you walking with this supposedly bad hip? The brain's going to feel, or the hip is going to send a signal to the brain that says, hey, I'm moving. There's a normal feeling. If you walk, you can feel your body move. But the brain is interpreting that as dangerous because it's been told countless times that you've got a bum hip. So the brain makes a decision to turn on the pain to stop you from walking because it believes, because you've told it, doctors have told you, your research has told you that you've got a hip problem. And so stop walking, go sit down, go lay down, do something different. So pain is really a decision made by the brain based on the information it has. So why do you think I spend so much time teaching that you're actually okay. So the brain will make better decisions. Pain is not evidence of tissue damage. It's absolutely not. You may have heard that story of the construction worker who jumped off of scaffolding in England, I think it was, years ago. And he looks down and there's a nail sticking through his boot. The brain made the decision, holy crap, you just speared your foot with that nail. And he freaked out and they took him to the hospital. They tried to give him morphine and that wouldn't even, you know, handle the pain because he was just excruciating pain. Well, come, come to find out, they got to the hospital. They cut his boot off and it was between his toes. He wasn't injured at all. The brain had made the decision, oh my God, you've got a nail through your boot. That's a big problem, and it decided to turn on the pain. 
So look, pain does not prove tissue damage. Just like touching a hot stove doesn't prove tissue damage. Ouch, you pull your hand away. You're not even burnt. But when you touch the hot stove, man, that hurt. So pain is only a decision, and it's really a warning signal. It's a danger signal. It is the fire alarm that is going off only there's no fire in, me in many cases. And in the case of this mind-body stuff, this neural circuit disorder, it's simply a warning signal and a decision that the brain is making to protect you because pain is a protector. Its goal is to go, hey, get your hand off the stove, dumbass. You're going to melt your skin if you're not careful. And so pain is there to protect us. We need pain. It's actually a very good thing to have pain. There are some, some people that have been genetically born not to feel pain. And they lead very short lives because they're not aware of the fact that they're doing something dangerous because they can't sense pain. So a lot of people say, I wish I didn't, you know, wish I never felt pain. Pain's a good thing. But it's not a good thing if it's based on bad data and this belief that you're broken when in fact you're not. You may have abnormalities showing up in your imaging studies, but you are not broken. Those are normal abnormalities and not the cause. And so inevitably, I don't know that it's, you know, it's a distraction from the repressed emotions. I don't know that it's a message from your body. You know, maybe it is a nervous system that has become so highly sensitized from a lifetime of scary things and danger and, you know, injuries and illness and pains and symptoms and fear and you know if you've ever been told you're why are you so sensitive you're such an anxious person you know your brain is going to be more likely to interpret messages from the body or signals from the body and interpret them as dangerous and turn on the pain make a decision to connect those neural circuits called pain and so, it's not your fault. You didn't cause this. You may have a highly sensitized nervous system, and they actually call that central sensitization. And even some doctors are starting to use that language without fully understanding the fact that that's good news because if the nervous system has become central, centrally sensitized, we can desensitize it with better information and calming and soothing practices, which I talk about all the time. And so I find this whole concept that pain is a decision made by the brain, I find that to be fascinating, and actually one of the most accurate sounding things that I have heard, much more so than theories about the brain having a, an ulterior motive of trying to distract you from the emotions. Now maybe that's true, because if you think about it this way, if the pain is there to distract you from the emotions, the brain might be perceiving those emotions as the dangerous thing. So it's making a decision to turn on the pain to distract you. Danger signals are danger signals, whether it be an emotion, a thought, a stressful situation, a hot stove. All of those things are perceived as dangerous. And as the brain receives these various signals, emotional, thought-based, touch, physical sensation, it's going to make a decision. And if the brain perceives danger, its job, the brain's job, is to protect you, keep you safe, and keep you alive. So if the brain is perceiving danger, it's going to turn on the pain very reliably. And so if you think you've got a hip problem or a facet joint problem or a pelvic floor disorder or a bladder that's infected or 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 you know any number of things your brain's always going to default to a decision that says i gotta keep them safe and so that's why the cure for this neural circuit dis disorder or this tms stuff really a lot of it lies in the education and 
absolutely the acceptance of that information. And once you get that right, you're turning down the fear. And fear and attention are the two things that kind of fuel persistent symptoms. So if you actually come to the place of place of you know belief system that goes, oh my God, my body's actually okay, and you lose the fear, your brain is much more likely to make a decision that says, oh, they're sitting down. I don't need to give them that searing sitting pain that I've been doing for the past 10 years because it, the brain's finally got the message. There's nothing wrong with your ass. <laughs> so I hope this message really resonates with you. I love listening to and learning from Dr. Schubner. He's such a great guy and he teaches so well. So what do you guys think? Does this make sense? Does it help drive home the point that the brain is simply protecting you? It's not here to torture you or punish you or, you know, anything like that. It doesn't have an ulterior motive. It's not this evil part of you that's, that's torturing you. It's simply trying to keep you safe based on the data it's received. And if the data it's received has been that you've got a flaw in your body, that's a problem. And anytime you go to use that part of your body, the brain's going to go, hey, that's dangerous. And it makes a decision to say, here's the pain to protect you. So the answer is, we need to teach the brain that we're actually safe. And all the things I talk about all the time, the soothing and the reassuring and the knowledge and the acceptance of that and feeling emotions to teach the brain that your emotions are safe. Soothing the body, calming the thinking, because if the thinking is going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm in danger, your brain's most likely not going to learn to turn off the, the warning signal because you're screaming, oh my God, I'm in danger, right? That's why I say nobody ever got better by freaking out, because when you're freaking out, you're teaching the brain that there is danger. And as long as the brain perceives this danger, it's going to keep turning on and making the decision to turn on the pain. Because if you're freaking out, the brain can't come up with any other conclusion other than, holy crap, there's a major problem here. Which is why I say, if you can't be indifferent, which is a great message of safety, at least don't freak out. Just reassure yourself. Look, guys, this isn't rocket science. It might be brain science. But it's not brain surgery. So... Pain is a decision made by the brain based on the data we've given it. And for anybody with chronic pain, it's very likely that it's operating based on data that's not accurate. It's based on misinformation, well-meaning, but misinformation from doctors, websites, people in the, in the Facebook pain support groups, friends, family. Hey, be careful, be careful. You got a bad back. And I'll just finish with this. The best way to talk about your pain is as little as possible. Preferably not at all, but as little as possible. Because if we want to teach the brain that there's no danger, you don't do that by talking about your symptoms all day long. So I'm going to wrap this up. This video is going long here. But I thought it was a great concept, a great topic. I hope you found this helpful. And... Uh, I guess we'll talk to you tomorrow.